Are you ready? Ready. Are we rolling? Rolling. Are we recording? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Do I like how everything looks? Yeah, oh. the button is on. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually just got a little nervous. <laughs> Welcome back, double teamed fam. How are we doing today? Um, so I'm fangirling a little bit because we have two guests here that I fell in love with their podcast. When was it? Last year sometime. And I listened to every episode and I absolutely love them. <laughs> and now they're here. But please welcome Kiki and Medina from Cocktails Dirty Hi Discussions. Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all. How are y'all doing? Good. Great. We are enjoying LA. Yes. Yeah. How is it like compared to Atlanta? Like the vibe? Very was. different. Yes. It's very relaxed here. Really? Every- yeah. <gasps> everybody just seems like. So laid back and happy and high. Like we literally, yeah. when we got happy here, yeah, everybody. Like we just woke up happy, and yeah. we weren't high, but felt like we were. Like it was just a. When you wake up in California, you're just happy. How could anything go wrong? I think yeah. it's the negative ions from the ocean, the waves crashing. I saw a TikTok about that the other day. It says it literally makes you happier. Really? Really? Yeah, because huh. it cleanses like the negative, or well, the negative ions cleanse the positive ones, but the positive ones are the bad ones. Coincidentally huh. enough. Well, I feel That's it. Whatever it's doing, it's felt. Wow. I like it. I feel like I should have brought a blunt to really make it like <laughs> Cali vibes. Oh, uh, yeah. Is that allowed in the studio? Uh, okay. 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 They're like, we're going to get banned. Smoking. We had cocktails on and then we got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> no, they love us. They do. Um, but yeah, so, uh, well, I'm glad that y'all are enjoying LA. We, yeah, for we grew up in Texas and mm-hmm. then when we moved here, I'll definitely say this. Um, I'm I'm just not made for like the South or the Midwest. I I tried both of them out, mm-hmm. and I think I just thrive here. So I okay. think it's the ocean and the mountains for sure. It, it is it is the mountains and like the nature aspect because mm-hmm. for me, when I lived in Texas and when I lived in Kansas, actually I lived in both. Um, there was no ocean. And there were no mountains. You could see Texas from <laughs> yeah. Kansas. It's just like flat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. y'all, okay. So and you went to high school in Arlington, and we went yeah. to high school in Carrollton. I just that is that is crazy. crazy. So and yeah. now we're here. Wait, so wait, how did y'all end up in Atlanta? That's what I was gonna ask. Yeah, what brought y'all to Atlanta? School. Oh, school. yeah. I went to Clark Atlanta, and then Kiki moved. I can't I remember moved. why you moved. Because I didn't want to stay in DC, so I went to college in DC. Oh. And so after I graduated, I wanted to be back in the South, yeah. but I wanted to be somewhere different in the South. And I had always enjoyed Atlanta. I've been to yeah. visit like a lot of times. Mm-hmm. I haven't so I decided to move. Yeah. I've been meaning to visit. I actually, we have a very good friend that lives in Atlanta. He loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he's staying there for the time being. He grew up in New York. Mm. Something like that. <laughs> anyways, I don't remember. anyways, he was very good friends with Nikki's ex husband, and then he and I ended up actually having sex once for like all of five seconds, um, oh. because <laughs> it was a long story. But anyways, so I've always been meaning to go visit. So I'll go visit him, and then I'll go say hi to y'all. So. Yeah, <laughs> she told us that whole story. I know. We <laughs> like, were in Texas, <laughs> and then I kind of fell no, off. I'm glad you guys are doing a show here because I've always heard about y'all shows, and I wanted to go to one. And so when Kimi mentioned that it was here. I was like, oh, thank God, finally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. You guys love doing a touring, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. That's so fun. And you guys go everywhere, too, which I love. Yeah, yeah. this is new for us, but yeah. it is exciting. We get to um, bring out a different part of the show that you don't hear every Thursday. Our live yeah. shows are very different from the weekly shows. Love and that. that's really interactive. So what we also love is that we'll get to meet people who have been listening yeah. to the show. And then a lot of times people bring people that have no idea what they're showing up to. Yeah. And they always end up having a great time. Time. So mm-hmm. it's just nice to be able to like actually interact because we're in a studio talking to us ourselves and the yeah. people, the crew. <laughs> I get that. No, I know. I mean, we did one live show last year, um, but that was probably the most like nerve wracking part is like going from like, you know, you're just in a studio recording to like suddenly there's like a hundred people yeah, in front of you. And you're like, oh, look at that. Entertain me right now. <laughs> yeah. Where'd y'all do y'all show at? Somewhere. It was a studio here in downtown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, it was a venue space. But cool. like, unfortunately, uh, and I did not think this through very well, but like we had to like buy the stage and get the chairs because rent the stage. Yeah, get yeah, the yeah. Chairs yeah. yeah. So, so we learned from that. We're like, now we're going to get yeah. Well, congrats to y'all because yeah. anybody doing any type of live show, it takes yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. Oh, it really my does. God. Yes. I had to yes. suck a dick on stage. Oh, a dildo. Not <laughs> like an <laughs> that before. <laughs> At our first show, we had a, a dick sucking contest. <gasps> And That's it was sponsored by that. someone. And so we had the dildos and we held the dildos <laughs> like they where they're supposed to go. And so then we had audience members come up and give us head. It was fun. It was <laughs> that wild. sounds oh awesome. My God. Maybe that's what we should do for this next so one. We, yeah, yeah, we did it slightly different. Okay. We were because we were gonna do more of like a like a deep throat challenge. Oh, so y'all um, was on there throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, would I have a good. I have a good gag reflex. I but I also I like, did, did not participate. It was Nikki yeah. and our friend HK. But HK <laughs> took it and like slammed it on the floor and then started going. It was the whole thing. <laughs> oh wow! But it was fun. <laughs> I like it. I know I the creative really process of the shows, like especially thinking of like things to come up with, like is always fun mm -hmm. yeah. but anyways but we don't have to talk about the podcast the whole time um we can get into more personal questions okay let's do it i like y'all's icebreakers and i actually started um you guys always do the questions in the beginning which <laughs> i love so then i was like you know what i want to think of random questions to like ask as like icebreakers okay so i had one recently and i really liked and okay we'll see what y'all's responses are okay. okay okay so the first one is if you had to explain to someone like say you had a kid and you had to give them the sex talk oh what would you say oh <laughs> we're telling our children this so we <laughs> love these little people yes and we want people. them to make good decisions okay uh, <sighs> talk to your father <laughs> they're not gonna learn nothing if they talk to daddy i think you know my sex talk with kids if i ever have them is going to be very serious turn the tvs off put the phones away and you need mm. to listen mm. don't yeah. have sex or you get talk. pregnant and die what do they say on mean girls <laughs> say, you stole that from don't mean girls? do it <laughs> don't do it no i i would definitely be like let's use condoms i want to show them pictures of stds mm. i want you to see what can happen if you're just out here frivolously fucking mm -hmm. i really hope that i don't I, I just hope that my girls aren't out here just hoeing it up but um <laughs> i'm gonna give them the tools they need to succeed so condoms right and std education anatomy we're talking about babies and we're talking about let's just hold off on the sex as okay. long as we can <laughs> what about like self-pleasure you I don't think if I had, if my child was like a teenager, like around 16, mm -hmm. I would talk to them about it because uh, male or female, because I feel like a lot of times people go into sex and it's ingrained in us kind of that women aren't really getting pleasure and you should just do all of these things for the man. And mm -hmm. I, if my girl is going to be out here fucking, I don't want her doing that. And I want her to know, like, you can enjoy it, too, if you choose to do it because I want to, I would want to have that door open mm -hmm. to where they felt comfortable talking to me so that they could skip some of the mistakes that a kid who can't talk to anybody right. would go through because you're going to be asking other idiots at your school and they don't know it's true <laughs> you that's talk to an adult I mean I like when I think back to like when I was learning about sex because you know it was in Texas, and I don't know what kind of sex education y'all got in Arlington, but... We didn't really it, have... Neither did we. It was literally one I class where they like were like... junior high. Yeah, there was one... We had home ec. Yes. Oh, we did have home ec, but they didn't really discuss sex in home ec. They just yeah. talked about having babies, because maybe we had to wear the pregnancy suit. Did y'all have to do that? Oh, I didn't yeah. Know that. Well, no, no, not the pregnancy suit, but we had the, to... the fake baby. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We did the like, pregnancy suits. Interesting. I and I didn't have to take that class at all, so... I just remember I <laughs> fucked up the pancake recipe in that class. Oh. <laughs> I forgot the flour. Oh, that's an I was important like, this doesn't step. look right. <laughs> that is an important step. I like I like your idea though of um, showing them pictures of STDs because I feel like that's the 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 outwardly ones. I definitely think like that's important. Like, okay, this is what you know HPV might look like or herpes. So they mm -hmm. at least have some form. Mm -hmm. I know I can't really show them chlamydia gonorrhea though, unfortunately. No. You're just going to be like, it smells, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Discharge is going to look a little off. <laughs> a little off. I get that. But yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. Our parents never really gave us much of a sex talk, so, like, everything I learned was from, like, friends and the internet. My mom was that type of mom where we learned about everything. Stranger danger. 
um, puberty, and we had to watch videos every Saturday morning. She would separate me and my sister from me from my brother. He had to watch a boy version of the video, and then we had to watch videos about like sex and what's going to happen to your body and where you're going to grow hair, what's going to happen when you get your period. And I actually really it was uncomfortable, but I love how my mom was like, I don't care if it's uncomfortable. You need to know these things. Yeah, and there's always been that open line of communication, age appropriate, and she wouldn't like go yeah. bust it wide open just because yeah. you feeling horny. You're born no. at twelve. Yeah. <laughs> No, exactly. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. great. I love that. I think that's that's people. That's the intelligent thing to do. People should talk to their kids about what's going to happen to your bodies and how you're going to feel. It's a really important, and it goes in with the sex talk. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. <clears throat> really. Oh, that was a rough time. I remember when I started my period. Me my too. mom didn't have a lot of the talks with us um, about that. We did learn it in school, so it was like she knew that we were learning it in school. She made sure that. We understood, but I wish somebody would have prepared me for the pain of a period because when that came on in the middle of my band concert, that was a horrible, horrible time. <laughs> that is a horrible time. Oh, oh my God. yeah. And then it's like, what do you do? Where do you go? What, what should I, what? <sighs> it was bad. I remember when I got mine, I didn't know what was going on because I was, I think, 12. Mm -hmm. And like my mom hadn't even explained it to me at that point. You thought and you were so, dying. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm uh, a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, but I had heard of like something similar to it. So then I went home and I asked her and she was like, oh my God. Anyways, but I just, yeah, it was, it was a little traumatizing. I was yeah, watching yeah. Saving Private Ryan. Uh -huh. What? With Recently? No. no. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, when I got my period the first time. Oh. Um, but I was, yeah, I was watching that movie. Uh, my brother was, I, I don't know where you were. Um, and most of my family was like out doing something, but it was like my little sister, my brother and I were watching Saving Private Ryan. And then I like felt something down there and I was like, what the hell? And she had gotten her period like two years before me. Mm -hmm. mm. So I was like, maybe it's my period. So <laughs> You're excited. I'm a woman now. I went to the bathroom and it was like this tiny bit of blood, like just tiny bit. And I was like, it's it. And then like from there, it was just, now we get it every month. Yeah, yeah. now you're like, fuck. You no thought you were happy way. to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still, I mean, I still celebrate it, but then you got to deal with all the symptoms. Mm -hmm. yeah. But kind of on that topic, do you remember your first orgasm? Ooh. Yes. I don't. I do, because it came way later than I thought it would. <laughs> uh, okay, see, that's the consensus. You're not alone there. Yeah, and it's like I thought I had had one until I had one. And I was like, I was just talking, I guess, because this is something that I have never experienced before. And it was with a guy who he's just really good at sex. Like, Love he that. needs to bottle that up and sell it. Like, it's good. <laughs> It's Do I good. know who you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really good and he's beautiful too. So anyway, that was the first time I had an orgasm. I was like, this is the first time I think I've also actually had sex with somebody who really and truly cared about my pleasure. Ooh. And that's what he was in it for. What age was this at? If you don't mind me I asking. was in my early 20s. Oh, wow. So I was probably like 23, 24. Wow. Yeah, because it was definitely after college. Mm -hmm. You said, Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because like, <laughs> wow, I feel like everyone has like the every time I ask this question, like the the ages vary so much that I'm uh -huh. like, oh, my goodness. Like, I think Cami said her first orgasm was at like 10. 10? Yeah. What, what were you doing? doing? <laughs> <laughs> were you masturbating with a teddy bear? OK, no. And, and, and this is the this is the weird part is okay. I actually didn't know what it was when it happened. OK, but I was yeah, I was probably around 10 or 11. I was laying in bed. Uh, Nikki and I shared a room and we had like each a bed on one side and then like a nightstand all this anyways I was asleep I don't remember this <laughs> yeah no so and I was just laying there it was pretty late at night I don't know why I was awake um, sometimes I like I don't know I got the nighttime scaries anyway so I'm just laying there and then I squeeze my legs and it was like euphoria and I was mm. like what the fuck happened what, what button did I just put <laughs> exactly <laughs> Um, and then from there, it was a very, uh, it was a very weird relationship with masturbating. It, yeah. It was, <laughs> but like, I, I specifically remember that moment because like, A, like it was the first one and it felt really good. And mm -hmm. like, you just, uh, for me, it was very easy to remember. But then I just remember like the questions that came after and I was definitely not prepared for that. So, mm. yeah. but yeah, the age always varies. Yeah. And so I remember there was, a, we had another guest and we were, she was telling us, I, I hadn't even asked a question, but she had told us that she didn't uh, orgasm until like 24-ish, uh -huh. but she'd been having sex for like five something years or something yeah. like that. 
So it's like, it's always interesting to see the gap between like from when they started having sex and like when they actually had an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting it that you felt don't really it. good, but. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember how old I was. What I do know is though, <laughs> now, normally every time I have sex, I orgasm. And this is the first time for that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Now, do you say, do you say that because like, you know how to get there? And so like, you take well, control Well, no, and no. It? I, I don't really count it when I make myself orgasm. Really? I'm just thinking about like when someone else has made me orgasm oh. and like. Yeah, and now someone is making me orgasm a lot. And okay, like so that. what's what's the secret? What's he doing? He's just paying attention. I think when you have grown up sex, <laughs> and like <laughs> like everyone's paying attention to the other person's wants and needs and you know desires, and you can tap into that, it's a lot easier. Mm. So. Pay attention. I'm not having grown up sex then. Are you Why? not? No, you I can still be. You don't have to <laughs> orgasm to have. Well, yeah, <laughs> yes, but it still it can still be good. I've had so a lot of sex and it still feels good even if I don't orgasm. No, I agree mm -hmm. there, and because you know there are just some days where I'm just like it's. I don't even want to. Yeah, yeah, you know it's like no matter how you're like well maybe there's there's too much something or like not enough whatever. Anyways, but um, but yeah, I always just hop on top, you know, do what I need to do, get there, and then I'm like. Great. Now, what do you need? Like, let me know. <laughs> it's not always like that, but I would say, like, majority of the time. Probably, like, 70% of the time, mm -hmm. it's usually like that. So, very rarely do guys, like, know how to make you come. Mm. But I do have one partner that is actually really good at it. But we ended things. Yeah. But we are trying to figure out how to be friends. Anyways, mm. <laughs> do you still talk to that guy? Uh-huh. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I can't. I tried to stop it. Uh, but, you Addicted. Know, a dick dick. It's like a dick, dick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We just have an understanding. So. Okay. So friends with benefits type mm -hmm. situation. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. And for our listeners as well, if they My don't know. favorite what are, situation. <laughs> same. It's. I'm it's like the chronic free. friends with benefits. It yeah. is easy. It is it's easy. so easy. Yeah. Yeah. But you're in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in one of those. <laughs> and you're a solo agent. And I am a free agent. Free. And I'm just out here looking. I love that. Looking and having fun. Have you, like, scrolled through the apps here in LA? You know what? I haven't. I don't really get on the apps like that. But oh. now that we're talking about apps, are either of y'all on Raya? Because I really want to join. Um, I'm on the wait list for Raya. Okay. Mm -hmm. But do you need, like, well, someone to, like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I do have friends that are on Raya. So yeah, we'll it, talk about that. Yeah, I want to get on. <laughs> Before I leave, I'm not leaving until Sunday at midnight. But you okay. might want to look on some of the other apps, too, while you're in LA. I know I used Maybe. to I used to do that like uh -huh. uh, when I traveled for work I would just uh, uh, my favorite story one time I was on the plane here in LA uh -huh. and I set my Tinder location to um, Arizona where I was going for work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. changed it to Arizona started talking to some guys um, started talking to one of them and then I was like okay when I land what if we meet here at this time I like did my quick vetting all everything that I need to do whatever he was cute Anyways, and he was like, sure. Okay, so I land. We finalize all the details. And within like an hour, he's in my hotel room. And it felt like ordering a pizza. <laughs> and it that's, sounds like it. That's literally what I said when I opened the door. And he was hot. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was a fun little experience. But that was the only time I'd ever done it. Mm. And I haven't done it since. <laughs> I don't know why. It wasn't a bad experience. I just like, afterwards, I'm like, that felt very... Like fun, but like disconnected. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. nothing about the guy. I met him yeah. like literally that. Yeah, I don't <clears> know. On the I internet. personally wouldn't have done that, but <laughs> the hotel, like <laughs> they, he knew where you were staying. Yeah, but it's got a lock. What does it matter? <laughs> you didn't die. Well, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Here I am today to tell the story. <laughs> but what's the dating scene like in Atlanta? I'm curious. Hmm. You know, there's um, it's a lot of men, but not enough men. There's oh. way more. Women, so I think um, a lot of times dating in Atlanta can be a lot of fun if you're looking for fun. I think that it becomes more difficult when you want something more serious. I think the guys just have so many options, and I can't even be mad at them. Really? Yeah, because I get it. And I've also noticed lately a lot more guys are being more open about not wanting a monogamous relationship. Okay, um, love that. Yeah, but, but if it's that's what you're looking like, for, if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you're looking for, and I feel like if that's something that you can afford, because we're not about to be having this like combine living where okay, you want to have three girlfriends to all contribute and we all come together. No, this is for fun for me. No, I get I that. Do, yeah, I get that. That's and fair. a lot of guys they want to do it, but it's like, can you afford 
to date three women. I'm not coming over to have movie night every night. Yeah, we're not about to all just we be sitting here chilling and cuddling. Stuff. We need yeah. to be traveling. Where are we, we going? We need to do some fun And things. where are the presents? Yeah, like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do when you're with girlfriend number two? I need to try on some new clothes and go shopping. I like it. Okay, so you're okay with a harem, but only if there's a lot of travel gifts. Yeah, I think it should be an overall fun experience. Like, like yeah. I matched with a guy here once who had a little harem. They all traveled with him to the, like, oh, the really? beach and stuff. Yeah. And I he need wanted to like me the to other join. girls. Yeah. That's a, that would be my thing. You know, is if like, and, and I've thought about that too in the past. Like, for example, I want to introduce, you know, uh, two of my current dudes. And I they I think they both think they, they're not going to like each other. But I'm like, I think you are. Anyways, <laughs> but, you know, but then I think about it too. I'm like, okay, if a guy, if I'm dating a guy and he has another chick, I'm like, I need to like her. Because if we don't get along, it's not going to be a good time. And I, I feel like I'm I'm a girl's girl. I think. Uh huh. Like I'm pretty easy to get along with. However, I have a strong personality. I am not everyone's cup of tea. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. what if she doesn't like me? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's a possibility too. Exactly. So uh-huh. I feel you on that one. But it's interesting to hear that there's like more like maybe non-monogamy. Like here, I mean, obviously that's what I look for. So I find it. I wouldn't say regularly but mm-hmm. probably more so than i would in like other areas yeah but i think usually big cities is kind of where you tend to find it why don't mm-hmm. you want to be monogamous um i so i was married um mm-hmm. and it was monogamous and then it was non-monogamous and i just felt that in monogamy i felt restricted mm-hmm. and i felt i don't know i i have a lot of kinks i like a lot of variety i like men and women Mm -hmm. i like to explore and it's not that like with one person you can't well you can't do the men and women thing with one person but you know you can't do those things it just kind of felt limiting and Mm -hmm. once we kind of started trying non-monogamy i'm like okay this works for me and Mm -hmm. he was like i want a divorce uh no (laughs) okay (laughs) it's like we tried it hated it (laughs) no we tried it and actually for four or five years it was very successful um but then he decided he wanted kids Um, and i was like i don't um, want children yeah so that's a deal breaker right there it was and everyone always asked they're like well didn't y'all figure that out before you got married and i'm like in my defense and his as well he changed his mind Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah about probably Seven years in, he he started changing his mind. Mm-hmm. Around the time that my kids, yeah, do y'all want kids? I do. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't want to be pregnant. I feel you on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the part that I'm not really interested in. I like kids uh, sometimes. Some of them. Would you donate eggs? Well, I tried to do that before, and oh. it didn't work out for me. I was trying to sell those eggs. I was broke, and I was trying to sell them. And I was like, I'm smart. I'm cute. I have like a good card mm-hmm. here, but. Um, I found out that I have uh, PCOS and Ooh. I was going to have to do all of this other stuff to hopefully get rid of the cysts because mm-hmm. they were basically saying that the eggs that are in my ovaries would never get big enough to mature for them to be retrieved. And I was like, huh, maybe that's why I never got pregnant. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would also like to be a father. I thought about that too. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't want to. No, we I don't, don't get the choice, though, unfortunately. I yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be a mother, but I would. I would. Yeah, the father route sounds a lot easier. I told somebody, you know, I was dating this guy, and he really wanted kids, and we were talking about it one day, and I was like, "What would you do if I got pregnant?" He was like, "I would hope you kept it," and I was like, "This is not good. I will make you a single father." <laughs> no. <laughs> Why would I keep it? No, no, no. That's no, a valid no. question. I actually yeah. read it was, or I shouldn't say I read, but it was on TikTok. I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> That's where I get my shit. Okay. I That's see where the TikTok. news comes from. Um, yes, actually. So, no, but it really does. Yeah. Under the desk news. What's the other one that we follow? The the blonde lady that know. has a really nice voice. Anyways. Okay. Um, basically, this, this girl got pregnant and the guy was like, I want you to keep it. And she was like, I don't want to be a mother. So she did like a whole contract Mm -hmm. and she was basically like, I will have this baby. You keep the baby. And then afterwards, like I'm piecing out. You're cool with this. Never speak to me again. Yeah. I was like, that's fair. If y'all negotiated this, signed it, you know, notarized it, whatever the legal process is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they did that. And then afterwards he was like pissed because he was like, I need help here. And she was like, I already told you I'm not going to (laughs) help. So I thought that was so fascinating when I read that. Yeah, because I don't know. I mean, what do you do in that situation? You already, you already signed the contract. I'm not doing that situation. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm not. Mm-mm. 
Mm-mm. Who was I it? Think it was it's a lot of work to have a kid. A lot of responsibility. Said, yeah, you. What did, it, what did they say? Shit, I'm trying to remember what it was specifically. Oh, when someone like is asking about like condoms or like you uh-huh. know how are we gonna you know before you have sex with someone and they're like, um, to give them the disclaimer that they're you can say something along the lines of like I have the right to like change my mind about an abortion at like any given point in this. I agree with that. Somebody says that? Yeah. Like, Uh, tell them before you have sex. Don't you think? um, Or is that too much? I mean, that's the right thing to do. (laughs) (laughs) That's the right thing to do. Is it realistic? I don't know. That does suck. I would be very upset if I was a man and I thought that we were on the same page that should you ever get pregnant, we're not going through with this and you change your mind. I would be upset. But I also feel like that's the risk you take when you have sex, period. Mm -hmm. It's just everybody knows how sex works. We know how babies are made. And that is a risk that you take. That's why I like to be on the same page. And then I think, well, would this man make a great single father? Because that's how (laughs) how it's going to (laughs) go. I think it's a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. But no, I also think, you know, you could change your mind too, though. You can. You could actually get pregnant and be like, you know what? Actually, I am going to keep this. It's just risky because then it's like all the emotions that come with that, especially if you're about to have a child with somebody who is telling you they do not want a kid. That is so risky. You can do it. But I think you need to mentally prepare for a very tough road. Yeah. Do know. you do you wear condoms every time you have sex? No. Mm-mm. I don't like I should. But oh, no. she's got a boyfriend. <laughs> Especially I get that. Especially relationships. Yeah, I was going to say, relationships, <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Okay. When I was engaged, we never did. But then even when I when I went through my little hoe phase after I was not engaged any longer, I um, the condoms were probably like 50-50. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we, we talk about this a lot. We always say at the very end of our show, we are condoms. Yeah, that is responsible. Yes. It is responsible. It's just... No, I would agree because when I started my hoe phase, I was like, I went through, I think it was like maybe like three, four guys that I didn't wear condoms with. Mm. And then I remember it was you. You were the one that was like, uh, oh, yeah. I was yeah. You were like, you. what about like, HPV? Condoms. I'm like, well, I'm getting tested. And you're like, what about HPV? And I was like, you know what? You're right. So then I started wearing condoms. Mm-hmm. But if I'm in a relationship with someone, then like, or if we're like seeing each other regularly, mm-hmm. I think that's fair because you don't want to be doing that. Be safe out here, kids. Yeah. <laughs> and adults have adult sex <laughs> make sure they make you come yeah yeah wait so and how how do you differentiate like for example before your relationship sex then versus like sex now oh yeah has it changed what you mean? like mm-hmm. do you feel like sex is better now that like you're like with one person and it's going well i, I hope think i'm a very passionate person okay so most of the times when i have sex it's gonna be good Okay. So it's not, I think it feels better to be with someone that you love and you care about. And it's like you, you're doing this because you love them. Like Mm -hmm. it's a different spark. Oh, like making love. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Yes. That's what it is. There's always the, you know, the argument of like, you know, sex versus making love is like, like actually a thing. There's a, you can feel the difference. And if you can't, you've never done it. You've just been getting smashed on. Like, you never really <laughs> have experienced sex with someone it's that where there's love there. It's a really good feeling. It feels different. Even when they, like, the deeper they go into your body, it's like they're opening up all these other little doors that you didn't even know existed. Well, well damn. Hot, yeah. So he's gifted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but I, I, I feel like, I don't know. Because at, le- at least in my previous relationships, um, like, for example, with my ex, it was definitely always more like the, like, making love. Or, I hate that term. But <laughs> that's just a personal preference. made love. That's just a personal preference. I would say it was more connective sex than, like, fun sex. Vibrational How, sex. Yeah, vibrational sex. I like Ooh, that. I like that. However. <laughs> that's going to be the title of the episode. We'll vibrational that. sex yeah. with cocktails. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's a great episode title. But anyways, but I, I like both, too, because sometimes I feel like I need the fun to kind of, like, feel feel something different. But that might just be the Libra in me. Mm-hmm. That needs like the balance of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I you don't know. I feel like I felt like that. <laughs> I because Libras do feel like that with everybody. You gonna have that day when you meet that one and you like, oh, I don't want nobody else. Is this Ooh, how you want to be early? Early? Yeah. Oh whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this, this needs to be Patreon content. <laughs> I love it. 
Okay. No, I get it. it is it or how long have y'all been dating? Oh, it's very um, early. Okay, super early. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, so you're like, s- some people have that feeling. You yeah, know? yeah. Like no, you- it's funny. When we were here recording with Cam and his mom, I was like, um, shout out to Addie. I was like, Addie, she's a great. No, Cam brought it up. He was oh. like, whoever Addie is, she's amazing. She's so organized. I was like, yeah, she's gonna plan my wedding. And <laughs> and then. Cam's mom was like, Miss Karen was like, oh, you're getting married? I was like, oh, no. She was like, you have a fiance? I was like, no. I'm just, I just talk <laughs> I about things. I was talking to Cam and I'm like, what is she I said it so here? honestly. I was like, yeah, yeah. She's well, going to plan our wedding. Well, there's a little planning ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least got that picked you... out. So whenever that day comes, now, you it's know. It's not as stressful. Yeah. Exactly. I'll just talk about it like it's happening. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, um, when I started dating my ex-husband within, and we started out as friends with benefits because, mm-hmm. I don't know, I like friends with benefits, but anyways. Um, so we just started out friends with benefits, whatever. He was my teacher. And then, oh. yeah, he was my college professor. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> she just slid that in there. <laughs> he was my teacher. He's my college professor. What? Um, so like I saw him often. We spent a lot of time together, but within a month I was like, we're going to get married someday. And he was like, mind you, I was 18. He was 23 and he was like, okay. And he didn't leave. Okay. So that told me that like, he felt maybe something mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. What did he, he teach? Him away. He, so I got my degree in aviation. And so he was also a pilot and he was like Dope. teaching aviation there. But the course that he was teaching had to do with like all the um, ground work that you have to do mm-hmm. in ground school. They call it that you have to do mm. for that. So, so. you're a pilot. We both were, are, yes. That is very sexy. <laughs> Come on, Piley. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that comes up in every episode and I hate it because uh, the biggest joke about pilots is like, how do you know a pilot when you meet one at a bar? And the joke is, they'll tell you. Oh. <laughs> so, here I am. I would be telling people. everybody That's like too. the vegans. Yeah. Vegans love it. I'm, I'm, I'm vegan. I'm like, vegan. Am I don't be, care. I'm vegan. Am I going to be able to eat something? I'm vegan. Yeah. We're a pescatarian. So, and I, in my dating profiles, I have a picture of me. They used to own a plane. So I had a picture of me in the airplane and everyone was like, is that your plane? Are you the pilot? And I'm like, no, but my so sister cool. is. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I love that plane. I'm sad we sold it, but. Wait, so y'all didn't use the dating apps at all? Or no, I used to be busting down on Tinder. Well, uh-huh. <laughs> when Tinder first came out, I was on Tinder. That's when Tinder was like, to me, like good. Now it's oh. weird. Really? Yeah. What do you I was like, changed? you can, I don't know. Now it's like, well, I have, it's been a minute since I got on Tinder because when it mm-hmm. started to get like prostitution, I was like, okay, it's, I'm done with <laughs> Tinder. And mm-hmm. then it was Hinge. And then I tried Bumble, but I didn't. Bumble's one where the woman has to make the first mm-hmm. move. I, we're already starting off wrong here. Yeah. So I I like I, that, I, mm-hmm. that lasted about a day. That was against our principles. I am not about to be. Who, sir? No, Come court, court me. Wrong <laughs> I got good pussy yeah. and it need to be courted. Well, and y'all talk a lot about that on your show. Like, set those high standards, expectations. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even like to call it setting it a high standard. That's what you're supposed to do. Like yeah. that's just like and the basic like. level. So if you don't like it or you take issue with it, that's fine. We're not a match. Let's move around. I want to weed you out yeah. as quick as possible. Sounds like I'm not getting younger to me. Yeah, yeah. not I high like but that. strong boundaries. That's I think I'm trying to practice. Is yeah, it can be hard at times. Mm. You just got to stick to it. Mm. Yeah. No, but I also think. I mean, when it came to Bumble, I I had the same mindset. I'm like, I hate that I'm having to like make the first move here. Like, I'm already here. Like, that's the gift. <laughs> so I would I would just send like three shakas, whatever it was. Like, uh-huh. is that how you call them? And then and then expect them to take it over from there. Like, very rarely <laughs> did I put in like any effort into starting that conversation. Unless the guy was like super hot and like mm-hmm. I needed to be like, I want to wow this dude. Otherwise, I was like, no. I was like, yeah, Y'all need to dating apps here. wasn't it didn't work for me. Uh, I just there's a certain type of person that dating apps work for and that they were even made for like people that aren't really that social and don't know how to communicate. And I'm the total opposite of that. So Love even that. the people, the matches that I did make and people that I was meeting, it was just like, oh, this is not going to work, my boy. What did you talking about? You're weird. <laughs> it, just, it, mm-hmm. it, it was just it's not my thing. And I tried. <laughs> I, we tried. We really I went on tried. Several dates, and then it also felt like speed dating. And it's like you probably have several dates that you have scheduled for today, because I know that's what I was doing, and it was getting stressful. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it. 
Um, I didn't like the guys. I didn't like feeling rushed. Um, and I met too many weird guys. I'll never forget. I met this guy. This isn't his fault, but it just wasn't a match. Mm -hmm. He was really tall, and he was cute in his pictures. So he was still tall in person, but he sounded like Pee Wee Herman. And <laughs> then he was driving a little Gucci Fiat. And I was like, now, how did you get in this car? Because he was like 6'6". And it was just, it was too much. So I couldn't look at him and take him serious. And he didn't want a girl that was going to be laughing at him. Yeah. You know, because that's what I was doing. Yeah. I'm also wondering how he fit. Voice actually plays oh, a, a huge role. A huge mm -hmm. role in the people that I, like, date. Because there are some voices that I just, like... I don't even like my own voice, to be honest. I don't like mine either, and it's too really? high, so we can't both be having these high-pitched voices. Are I you like y'all's voices? Yeah. I love y'all's voices. Y'all sound great. Especially <laughs> yours. I love my voices. Yes. 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 <laughs> well, are, and don't you do... Um, voice over. Voice yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, but that's what I love about listening to you guys. It's always, like, like nice to be yours. It's so oh. soothing. Thank and you. And like, the, the way in which you talk, like, with, with certain words, like, it kind of, like, it's like a wave. I don't know how to explain it, but you can see so the sweet. sound wave. Yeah, I, just, sound wave. I find it so. Sweet. Are you on mushrooms? Like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I one time I met a guy and like I hadn't talked to him before. We just like messaged a lot and like on Instagram, whatever. Anyways, and then we met in person and I heard him for the first time and immediately I was like, I need to get out of here. Yeah. I and wonder I if he knew so that. Bad. That's like a hairline situation. Like <laughs> you take your hat off and that hairline is and running. Like, and now you don't hear you from me at. no more. And mm -hmm. do you know that that's why I'm not hearing you no more? I don't you think got they know. to know. I'm curious, what do you so you found a boo, but what are you looking for? What do you <sighs> tall? Tall, yes, tall, dark, and handsome. Okay. Preferably royalty in a foreign country. That would be great. <laughs> We love you know. that. I just want to invite to the wedding. Yeah. Um, but tall, dark, and handsome is my it's my type. I would like for him to be smart. Um, and I don't want anybody that's like on Instagram all day or constantly taking pictures of themselves. He can't be too vain. He needs to look good, but it can't be too vain. Only I can do that. I agree and, with you on that. Um, what else would I say? I would like somebody who's family oriented. Mm -hmm. I really like that. I always say you got to get specific with the universe. So mm -hmm. let's hear it. Six two, six three, six three <laughs> okay. is the perfect height. Uh huh. I would prefer that he Short be hair. very well educated. I'm open with the hair, but it needs to be maintained. Okay. So whether you're getting regular haircuts or you have braids or something, I don't like the wild hair. Mm. Um. Hmm. What else can I say that's specific? I would like for him to drive a G wagon. Or um, a Tesla, either the Model Y or Model S. <laughs> okay. I think that would be In perfect. Red. Yeah, manifest it. Mm -hmm. Keep going. No, I always think that's it for now. No, it's true. You got to get specific. Like I, I'm not gonna lie. There have been plenty of times where like I try to think about it, and I'm like, these are the specific things that I want, and because I, you know, it never hurts to to let the universe know. Mm -hmm. Right, what that ideal Maybe candidate they're looks like today. So you never know; they might show up. Yeah, I was actually might. looking at a text one of my more recent partners that I were. A little more serious, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the lines get blurred in non-monogamy. Like, I don't use boyfriend. I use, like, partner or, like, friends with benefits or, like, a dude I sleep with. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of, it, it, it can vary. But um, anyways, I was looking at a text I sent a friend not that long ago. And then I was like, this matches. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, did I manifest this? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I never heard I will specific. say, um, definitely get specific. I one time, okay, so I went to this party. Uh -huh. and I had a blast and I met this guy there and he and I were like making out for like five hours because we were both on mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a Tesla. Very nice. Oh. Um, but then we went to his, his house and um, or his apartment and he had an air mattress. What? Ooh, get your priorities right. Kim. Yes. <laughs> Did he rent the car? I have no idea. But Could that's, have. that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. But he that's rented the car just to capture your eye. Well, I don't even know if it was about that. I mean, he had a really nice job. He's a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. A hot chiropractor. Where was his mattress? Right? Yeah, it was he just like... He should know better. It was, was it getting a, shipped? It would, No, I don't know. It would, But he had an ear mattress in the corner of a one-bedroom loft. And I was just thinking, I'm over here like, <laughs> okay, he has a really nice job. He has a Tesla. And then he has a ear mattress. Do so. you think maybe that was like his bachelor pad and he had a real place somewhere else? And that's <gasps> just where he takes girls to smash them but really quick? But still on an air mattress? You can't just get a, at least a cow? I would think he would know better because you're a chiropractor. That's not good for your back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're right. Yeah. And he'll send, me, he'll send me messages every now and then of like him shirtless in bed. And I'm like, is that the air mattress? <laughs> like, Can you oh not tell? Is it, do the sheets look the same? No, it's like kind of blurring in the background. I'm just like, Ugh. 
But she she brought up some great points that I had never you thought of. You need to investigate. This. Yeah, what if know. that's not even like his actual place? I'm not thinking hey. about a second date. What if he I'm went not. to the concert? <laughs> You're done. No. Okay. <laughs> nope. Just that one and done. We had a great five-hour <laughs> session on the mushrooms. That was it for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going back. I, with your boo, do you feel like, did you manifest him? Did he... I definitely prayed for him. Ooh, okay. That's what I would say. And I love some that. like the details, all of his trimmings that come along with him. I'm like, when I go back and read some journal entries, I'm like, wow, I really prayed for him. Like, I'm really specific about teeth and smiles. Like, okay. you need to have like a 10 out of 10 smile. You have a beautiful <laughs> smile and Thank perfect you. teeth. Yeah, yes. so Thank I see you. That. And so does he. He has a beautiful <laughs> smile, perfect teeth, um, very mannerable, and oh. just. The most chivalrous person that I've met. He's just, and it's not like something where it's like I had to teach him or be like have these conversations. He just gets it. He just got it right off the bat before I even knew I was gonna be with this man. And so, yeah, I probably prayed him up. Thank you, that. God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would say when it comes to like at least because L.A. men are a certain type, but when I think about like the. The guys, like, especially, like, in Texas, Mm -hmm. I'm assuming probably Atlanta as well, like, they do that level of mannerism in which, like, they open the car door for you. Like, they go out of their way to do this. I feel like you definitely find that more there. In the Mm -hmm. South. In the South, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would say the dudes are probably a little bit more, like, the... The chivalry, the chivalry is not yeah. dying there. Mm-hmm. I've always liked that. I well, say- now, it'd be dying. It's oh. a little oh. bit <laughs> dead. But, dude, like, a lot, a lot of people aren't do. I can only count on... Probably like one hand how many times my door has been open just in the dating world. So mm-hmm. it's not happening a lot. I do think it has to do with like how you were raised. But mm-hmm. before I got I with him, it that. wasn't a lot of the Southern boys still weren't doing it. Interesting. I would say I haven't I, dated Southern guys in a long time because Texas, that was a long time ago. But yeah, in L.A., I don't know. They're I mean, some. I they feel like in L.A., they would be too. like, could you get my door? And can you take a, <laughs> can you take a picture of me getting in? Oh my god, I would post die. It on, put a filter on it. <laughs> I would <laughs> die. Like what? No, that's probably a pretty accurate description, though. I no, I've definitely come across some dudes where it's like the the way that they act or the way that you know it, it's almost as if like you know they think you're lucky to be spending time with them, and I'm like. No, the no. second I feel something like that, I'm like, oh, I can't do this. this. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will say, I will ask one thing. Have you have you tried short guys before? Because they're kind of a vibe. I, like. have. <laughs> I tell her all the time, give I the short tried, man a chance. I have tried the short guys. It's not my vibe. How <laughs> tall are you? I am 5'3", five, three, five, three, but okay. I never really wear a flat. So I like to think of myself as somewhere around the 5'6 five, to 5'7 five, range. Love that. Because that's what my heels are. And um, I don't meet a lot of <laughs> short guys, but when I do... They just tend to be angry. And I don't know if it's something that I am inciting inside of them, but they are just like little angry men, the smallest little thing that sets them off. And they just get crazy. I remember this guy was really upset. Yeah, I told him that we could go to brunch. Um, So I met him at a club and he fell in love really quickly. I don't know why. And I ended up borrowing his car i can't remember but it was way nicer than my car so i kept it for a while and then i <laughs> Wait, accidentally what? Oh, i remember this <laughs> and i was hosting a party and then he was very upset because i didn't like call him for brunch and he was like going off on me and then he sent me these very aggressive text messages because i accidentally scraped the curb a little bit on his rim but i'm Ooh. like you're a scammer you didn't even earn this car with your money i don't feel bad <laughs> mad at him. okay yeah well because he was getting an attitude with me you stole this man's it car was, he told me i could use it he offered it up because the whole thing was he didn't want me to have to go all the way back home when i had to go pick up my friends mm-hmm. so he was like you take one of my cars too. i remember I, sure did. I was driving that car i was whipping that thing <laughs> wait what was it what was it, it was um it was a jaguar it was the car the big one i think that's uh J, I don't know. Oh, the but J. I, well, I don't know what letter it was, but it was a big mm. one, a big nice. force. Wait, but yeah, he I, he offered up his car like first thing. Yeah, oh, wow. we were at a club together, and I had to pick somebody up from the airport. So I've never yeah. had that happen. Before. I was gonna say I don't think I've ever had dudes offer come up to their Atlanta. Car. I feel like I need to raise the <laughs> bar then. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I do yeah. like that. I um, I'll never forget because I I tend to like taller dudes as well. That is a little bit more of my preference. Oh, wait, where? Oh, it's 215. Oh, the phone died. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, I can't read that. I'm like, <laughs> I just see a black screen. I saw it. I was like, wait. I was trying to look at some <laughs> <two laughs> <two laughs> <two laughs> But 
But um, anyways, and this is the first time I went on a date with a guy that was like my height. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I'm also 5'3". Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm like between 5'2 and 5'3". I think it's like 5'2 and 3 quarters. Anyways. And um, he was my height. Exactly. And at first I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know how this is going to go. We're going to see. Um, and he was so funny. I laughed so much. Oh, I feel good. like, you know, this might be a really bad thing to say, but the tall guys don't really develop personalities because yeah. <laughs> they're like tall and hot. But then the shorter guys do. They have to try a little harder And then they sometimes. have they have like a sense of humor and I don't know. Maybe that's a really bad thing to say, but that was my experience. At it's least. one of our theories. It was a theory. It's a theory. I Makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Would that would you say is that your experience with the guys there? Do they have a good personalities? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the taller ones have been good. I like them. Okay. I'll Maybe like one short guy was actually pretty cool. Okay. He's still around. We'll see. As a, there's no benefits to that friendship, no, okay, but we'll, gotcha. we'll, we'll see friends. what happens. Yeah. Just friends. I mm-hmm. like it. With your, how was long as you've had a friends with benefits for? 20 years. I'm just playing. <laughs> um, 11 years. <gasps> That's a long time. Right? I love that though. Yeah. My longest I, one was three years. Yeah. I had one, I had one in college that was about two and a half years and I really loved that. He and I, we just had this understanding like, it wasn't going to go past what it was, but it mm-hmm. just stayed where it was, and it was consistent. Mm-hmm. And I really like the consistency, and I just... So it's I reliable, <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's good sex. Mm-hmm. And, like, neither you... 11 years. Wow. <laughs> How often? In 11, like, in every year, like, does it vary? It varies, because we don't live in the same place. Mm, okay, gotcha. Yeah, so it just kind of depends. Ooh, a satellite partner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so, what we call it, non-monogamy. Yeah, a satellite, satellite partner or a comet partner. Around. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, whenever they're like just passing through, like oh. a little comet. Oh, mm-hmm. and I like hook that. Up. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a fun term. Mm-hmm. What about you? Did you have any friends with benefits? I've had them, but I'm not. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I'm not a friends with benefits no? girl. Okay. Like I'm not. They'd be turned into relationships. Okay, gotcha. But I've tried. <laughs> tried. <laughs> it's not for everyone. It really is. I'm emotional, and I will be mad. So. Yeah. I, I feel like we need to read in. your chart. Yeah, well, I'm really I curious what the moon is in. I, I want to see. Do you know your birth time? Uh, I, got, I have my printout. When I get back home, okay. I'm going to send a picture of it to y'all. I guarantee you it's a Scorpio moon. Or Mm-mm. I think I want to say it's Aquarius. I was going to say Aquarius. Oh, I think I'm Libra, Aquari- Libra, Aquarius. Because Aquarius is also really like, um, they want people that are like a teensy bit obsessed with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like not too much, like you might space, but like just enough to where they're, they're like, you know, your own little. Game. Yeah. Well, that makes like me want to run. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm with you there. That's yeah. kind of I am too. I'm like, if they're, if I need space and like, if they want to be like super into me, like that's cool. But like, if it passes a threshold, I'm like. No, I think I, like, I want, I want someone a little bit obsessed with me. Just a little bit. Okay, so I was thinking about it that. today. I actually would love to have like a little harem of three dudes that all <laughs> love me. And then I want, I, I'm manifesting right now. Um, <clears throat> I want two of them to also be in love with each other. So like bi, um, but then be equally as in love with me. And then the other one is just straight and yeah. That's want. very specific. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, we like to, we, I really do think you have to get specific because otherwise, if you leave too much, you know, to be interpreted, then the universe or, mm. you know, whatever you believe in could send something that's like, yeah, it aligns with this. But then it's like completely not aligned over here. I so. need to make a list tonight. Mm. Wait, I mean, no, it's helpful. Do so it on a new moon. You journal. Do you journal? No. <gasps> really? <laughs> you sound so sad. Oh, no, no, I don't no. really. <laughs> I think journaling helps like organize my thoughts do either y'all mm. do therapy mm-hmm. yes Ooh. okay we're also big therapy fans yeah here. we have three we also have a joint therapist i yeah. love her do y'all have y'all okay and with working together and y'all are friends do you do you fight a lot sometimes <laughs> i think we just disagree on things sometimes um not really fight though yeah it's never, i'm not a fight or argue argue is a better word i just tend to use fight so i think disagree and we've had our moments of you know where it wasn't the strongest but you work on relationships if you yeah. want it to work so mm-hmm. like Nikki any human I, yeah we argue a lot I y'all are sisters <laughs> yeah but, and twins but we it's also you know we intense. do the pod together we live together we have like all the same friends that's a lot. oh yeah that's yeah, a lot so it's of like togetherness a lot. yeah do you guys you don't I'm trying to remember because I know you guys got a place, a new place where you were doing like your recordings, but do you live together? No. No? Okay. Mm-mm. Gotcha. My roommate days are gone. Yeah. And they've been that. gone for, I can't live with anybody. What about your boo? 
I don't even know if I want to live with a man. <gasps> Ooh. So what if it progresses there? What? It's time. Oh, oh it's gotcha. Time. Okay. <laughs> wait, but wait, wait, I want to hear this last. What? Mm-hmm. How? How do you think if he if it could progress to? I don't know. It would be a, a discussion because I'm just like I love living alone. <laughs> I get just, that. Do, just do the Gwyneth Paltrow method. You Live both next have door. your separate. Yeah, you both have your separate houses. You spend the night with each other three nights out of the week, and then the other four you're alone. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I, I think see. that could work for some people. <laughs> so she does time apart. That's what she does with her husband. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, well, thank you guys for joining. Thank, thank you for you. having us. It was lovely meeting you and just chatting. So. I know. I feel like it's this is nice all over the place, too. but I love it. We yeah. do want to let y'all's listeners know we're on tour. So mm-hmm. if you miss yes, the yeah, LA show, follow us on Instagram at Cocktails Podcast. There's a link tree in our bio and it'll list off all the cities. We are making a lot of stops for this Dirty Little Secrets tour. So we, we hope to are. see y'all. Yes, we'll be on tour through May 20th when we end in Dallas. And then also we have a discussion card game. Mm. So if you guys want that, you can purchase it at I'm Curious to Know dot com. Oh, I yes. I. So I always hear y'all playing that in the on the shows. I really yeah. Like. I've been meaning to order it. Yeah. I just don't play a lot of card games, but I like the prompts. So. Yeah. It's all discussion. So yeah. you can play a couple. And cards then what and are your um, handles for yeah. any for anyone listening? So I'm at Kiki said so. It's K I K I S A I D S O. And I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. Love it. The first time that you that I heard you say your handle, I was like, what was that? <laughs> You know, I was like trying to, I was like not piecing it together. Um, and guys, you can find us at doubleteampodcast.com. All relevant links are there. And then, of course, at Double Team Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, at Kimmy and Nikki on Instagram as well, and all that good stuff. Anyways, y'all know, wear condoms, come to our live show April 7th in San Francisco. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>